Welcome back to the Remote Online Notary Network. Today, I have Sean Cofield of Virginia Online Notary with me. Sean, thank you so much for joining me. I'm really excited to hear everything you have to share with me and all the online notaries out there. Please uh, let us know how you got started. How did you initially get your original commission and then your RON online commission? Okay, so um, I was you know, looking for a change like everybody is. I, I had already one foot out the door, um, but um, I had like a family emergency. So I was, you know, my IT background is where I come from. So the whole working remote, this is not a new concept for me. So I always had a, a interest in real estate and I, I wanted to figure out what aspect and area of it. So I studied everything I could from being a real estate agent, being a wholesaler, being a flipper, being a um, renovator. And I knew, okay, uh, or, or even a, uh, they call it restoration it still wasn't clicking. Then I ran across this thing called BPO stands for broker price opinion. It's okay. This makes sense. So, but I didn't realize you had to have your real estate license. So I started studying for that and um, I was like, all right. And then, you know, randomly YouTube university, some popped up about being a notary. And, you know, I saw the numbers they were talking. I was like, yeah, I kind of know my mom's a notary. So I said, well, let me check this out. So I called her about it. She didn't really, know anything beyond the old school way of, yeah, I notarized documents. And I remember like the, you know, the five and $10. I said, there's no way people are living off of this. What's going on? <laughs> so <laughs> you remember that $5 bill that slid across the table? Yeah. Right. Right. So, um, I checked out one of the seminars, you, you know how they, I, I don't knock anybody's hustle, but at the same time, it was a lot of fluff, but no real detailed information. Mm -hmm. And because they want you to sign up and pay like $4 million for the seminar. And then then yeah. figure it out. So, you know, I did my own research and um, starting with like a, a Google and NNA and stuff like that. So, oh, okay, I get it now. So I got my commission and my, uh, from start to finish my commission to my, my notarization in 30 days at the peak of the pandemic, unheard of, you know, but somehow it just worked out. Mm -hmm. So I got my, my um, first, the first part of the commission. Um, then I signed up and realized, okay, you have to submit a second application in Virginia with your wrong credentials. Failed at the first time, got rejected. Didn't know what I was doing, you know. Uh, luckily, you know, they don't take your money. So it's like, you know, here's your, here's your application fee, try it again. So once I got that um, situated with, you know, the, uh, so basically they have a test and mm -hmm. they say, okay, if you can turn in the paperwork correctly, then you pass and become a Ron. So what that <laughs> means is digital certificate and your, your seal on the paper and sign it and then turn it in. Mm -hmm. So once that was approved, I mean, I literally like uh, the day, the next day, like, yeah, congratulations, you're a run. I'm like, okay, that's it. What, what else, you know? What so just happened? Just, right, <laughs> right. <laughs> so I did some more, some more research on that, but I, I guess I apologize if I, my, my brain scrambles, but initially doing the signing agent stuff, I noticed, I learned real quick, this is not for me or all this driving mm -hmm. just wasn't, you know, with it. I understand about you have to pay your dues um, with the, uh, you know, the small fees with the signing services and all that. But even beyond that, I was like, I'm kind of lazy and <laughs> this is not going to work. You know what I'm saying? So I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. <laughs> so somehow I stumbled across the Ron situation, dove, you know, feet first, head in, right in there. Because, again, I was from the IT world mm -hmm. and it just made sense. And then things just snowballed from there. I sent an email. I'm thinking I'm late to the party already by the time I become a qualified Ron. Yeah. And because in Virginia, it was, uh, it started, I think, um, I think talks were 2008, but 2016 is the official date. Mm. And, you know, it was 2020. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm real behind. And to my surprise, there was a huge You're gap. right on time. Right. Huge gap. So mm -hmm. I went through that, wrote, send, it, send an email and they were like, yeah, I want you to come talk about this and everything from one after another. And now I'm here talking to you, you know, and I'm really grateful you are because I know you've done many interviews and, and you and I spoke on the phone about a year and a half ago. And so when I was thinking of who to interview next, I thought, well, I need to reach out to Sean Cofield. So thank you for <laughs> accepting the invitation. Um, shot. Appreciate it. <laughs> well, I know you're active and you're actually doing it and you're successful. So you've got wisdom that we want to share. Well, I, I, I want to draw from yeah. you and share yeah. with everybody. So uh, I think I know the answer to this, but 
my next question was about what's your split? What's the uh, percentage of online notarization work you do versus your in-person? I'm 100% wrong. Wrong all the way. I don't blame you. I spoke with another lady earlier today, um, Terry, and she told me her mother is 92 and she lives with her. And she said, I don't go out anymore at all. It's all Ron, all online, all the time. And so there are definitely folks doing it where it is 100% on the computer. We're not meeting at all. This is how. If you think about the logic, um, again, one of the reasons I got into the business is because the middleman experience is where you make the most money. Like I'm not a buyer of the real estate. I'm not a seller of the real estate. There's transactions always going on between companies and business, whatever paper needs to be notarized. I said, this makes sense. Then from the Ron perspective versus a mobile notary, I was like, okay, let's factor in all these costs of startup of, you know, buying a printer, papers, pens, toners, toners, driving expenses, you know, gas, late nights at people's house. If you get into a wreck, no one's covering your insurance, you know, it's on you and your business. So I was like, the the numbers didn't add up. And again, number one reason I I was just lazy. I was like, no, I'm not doing it. (laughs) Well, I think it's good to be honest with yourself because some people probably, and I've been a, this person, I'm convinced that I can do it throw it all at me. I can do it. But what I can't do is I can't do it for six months. I can't do it for a year. So let's begin as we mean to go on. And I respect that you knew what you were willing to do for the long term. And you said, I'm going to focus here on where I want to be and keep going. You know, when I, I hear a lot about these side gigs for notaries, like fingerprinting, and the property inspections and things like that. And like you, I, I was had an interest in BPOs, the broker price opinions at one point, and I did do hundreds of them five years ago, mm. but uh, it's, it, there's a lot of driving and there's a lot of like really thankless, I mean, yes. walking in waist deep weeds. I did it. And this is where there's snakes. Okay. So I was tiptoeing. <laughs> squealing like a girl sometimes as something slithered by me and yeah. these houses are abandoned that you go take these most of the time these broker price opinion properties in my country area they would be right the right the, it's not something that I did for more I did it for like a year as mm-hmm. a side hustle when I was um, finishing up grad school so yeah. I think it's better to really focus on what you want to do. So in your case, you want to do the online notarization and do it and try not to get too distracted by the other side things that, that take your time. So if you're not online notarizing hundred percent of the day, I'm assuming that you're marketing somehow online notarization, you're contacting like who, who, who do you reach out to throughout the day and how do you touch them? So they know you're um, there. So I have a whole um, marketing training program that I, that I uh, built, but at the same time, you know, some nuggets I'll take, I'll give you a free nugget for, for you listeners on Fridays, call your um, title company, especially if you're Ron, you got the whole entire nation. Stop thinking. I have a logo on my email. Stop thinking like a mobile notary. Start thinking like a global notary. You can call nationwide different States, call the title and escrow companies on a Friday, after like lunch, they're tired, hungry, desperate <laughs> and say, hey, I know you got your, your go to team. I just want to throw my hat in the ring and see if offer my service in case you got any last minute closings. You'd be surprised how many be like, all right, I'll throw you a bone. Let's see what happens because they, they're ready to go home. Right. You know, you get the you get the um, the offer, knock it out the park. Boom. Now you got a client for life, you know. So that's just one of my many uh, tricks that I use to uh, gain business. Now, when you get when you get to like the level one, Matt, to be honest, when you're a Ron, you don't need as many. Um, you don't have to, you know, as a mobile, you, you're, you're taking whatever comes. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But as a Ron, because your expenses have become so, you know, reduced so much, you don't need as many clients to sustain yourself as a full time gig. You know, you don't need a hundred different title companies and just be in contact with them. You get, you get maybe five or five strong ones that are consistent. Maybe throw a couple of law firms in there and go, you know, stop, you know, cause everybody's chasing title companies. You got to think outside the box and, and, and do some other things as well. Mm-hmm. You're good to go, you, you know, cause they're throwing you stuff on a regular 
you're at home, you have a calendar, you book it, you know, I don't, I don't have to uh, chase down as many um, leads as, as much as I used to, because I have my steady clients. And then where it gets out, you start building the rapport, like, you know, with yourself, fellow signing agents in other states, we, we piggyback off each other. Um, you know, vacation is the biggest issue. You, you work hard, you build your, your reputation up, and then you're like, okay, I'm scared to quit because I'm, they're going to go call another notary, right. right? So one tactic is pair up with another uh, notary. I got, I got a, a good colleague. He's in all the way in Nevada. When I go on vacation, he takes my overflow. When he goes on vacation, I take his overflow. No, everybody wins. Yep. You know? That's perfect. That makes a lot of sense. Good. So everybody find a trusted online notary cohort <laughs> where you right. can say, I'm going to place you with my trusted notary colleague during these dates. And then I'll be back and we'll pick up where we left off. Sound good? Sounds great. And you're, I'm sure your clients really appreciate that you've taken care of them. You just didn't leave them high and dry. Like, Peace exactly. them out because <laughs> they really respect that you said, I've put thought into this. I want to make sure that you're okay. And when I get back, we'll continue as we were. That's Correct. great. Correct. All right. Now I know that you also do apostille work. So yes, I sir. really want to give you a chance to speak about that. And I was looking on your website and I saw that you did take uh, Judy Lawrence's course. So share with us how apostille is going. Okay. So um, how that worked, like Judy's wonderful. We, um, she, when I first started, she guided me how, how, same thing. There was, um, sometimes you don't, you don't know what you know until you kind of throw your feet to the fire. So, um, I did my own research on Appa steel work ahead of Judy's class, ahead of Judy's class. I took Judy's class for two reasons. One, boost self-confidence just to confirm, do I know what, what, you know, what I'm talking about? And That's two, a great reason. Yes. Right. And, and two, um, um, marketing, because Judy has an official um, certificate. You know, yes, I, I was qualified, but no one that stuff is for other people to feel comfortable. It's not for me. It's for my clients. <laughs> yeah. So I said, let me just take the class so I can get the certificate. So I got the certificate and then I can post it on my, on my um, website. But at the same time, Judy was wonderful during that phase in the beginning phase, because I could call Judy at any time and, and, you know, ask her a question or whatever. And we, mm -hmm. till this day, um, you know, we, we keep in contact. She actually partnered me up with uh, somebody else in New York. And we're like Batman and Robin when it comes to notarizations <laughs> and apostilles. We, yeah, we, we piggyback off each other big time since day one. Um, because that's who, that's my trusted partner when it comes to uh, apostille work, you know, and same that thing. Great. works. Just, yeah, she'll send them over. So do you want me to go into detail, like, you know, the yeah. concept of it or? If you, if you're comfortable, if, if you don't really want to share it out, that's, I yeah. get it. You don't have to. Yeah. Well, but, I'll, I'll give the, the, the high level what I tell people because it, it is a basic question. People say, okay, I keep hearing about this posture work. You know, how does it, how does it work and who can do it? And the, the simple question, the simple answer is one, anybody can do a posture work. They just don't realize it. Right. There's no age limit. Um, you, you need to be qualified, but there's no such thing as a certified apostille because there's no actual, you know, school. You Somebody might create a, a curriculum, put their stamp on it, but, you know, there's no official like NNA level mm -hmm. of it. So I always tell people, if you and I are doing business, right, I sign a document, notarize it in um, Virginia, put my Virginia stamp on it, and I send it to you. And you have to use it. Are you going to question it? Or are you going to be like, oh, yeah, this is just a Virginia seal and I'm good to go? Yeah. That's, it's, that's it's good to go. Right. So that's the trust factor at the state level, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So if I know you and I say, hey, uh, can I borrow, you know, $100? You're like, I don't know you from Adam. <laughs> <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But if let's say your husband... Is it, you know, I know him and he said, hey, let Sean borrow $100. You're going to be like, okay, I, that's my husband. I trust him. I'll yeah. do the $100. So then you ask yourself, that's trust on a personal level. So then how do two countries trust each other? That's where apostille comes into play. Yeah. And that's the essence of it. That makes so sense. You're, you're, in the, you're in the middle, um, guaranteeing trust between two countries. Mm -hmm. So without giving away all the goods, because I do teach a class on that's that's the essence of it. All right. Well, actually, let me share your class link here. Let me share the screen. Well, and my postil is one of the courses. I also, you know, offer Ron training in three. 
I split up into three modules, becoming a run, understanding platforms, and uh, marketing and promotion. And oh, also, good. Yeah, so, and also have to um, train uh, title and escrow companies um, as well. You'd be surprised how many really don't know. So I offer yeah. to train, I offer to expose them to the Ron world or train their in-house notaries, you know. That's brilliant because you can sign up for the training on some platforms, but some of it's just video based and you have real world questions that are from yeah. scenarios I, happening in the office every day. Right. So that's great. I get a lot of uh, um, questions or uh, requests talking about, hey, hey, do you have the video? Again, I'm still in the trenches on purpose. I'm not trying to become um, like, a, you know, no pun intended, but Ron University. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I'm not trying to be official with it. I'm, I'm a one-on-one mentor trainer, but I still like to do the work, actual signing agent work. So I, I don't really plan to expand to that, to that level, you know, mm-hmm. having like, you know, trainers under me and a massive, that's not, that's not my, my aspiration. Again, I'm just being honest with myself. Mm-hmm. Those who are doing it, it makes a lot of sense. Just like signing, like notary signing agents who become uh, signing services. You know, mm-hmm. some want to do it, some don't. I'm, I'm just not built like that. So you can share with them the self-learning document. So this is something you probably made maybe in Drive or something, but it's got step-by-steps for them. Yes, and, that's for yeah. those who might be on a tighter budget and they can't afford the um, um, by mentoring one-on-one. Right. So it's a self-learning, self-paced. You just read the document, go and, you know, go about yourself. Kind of how what I end up doing, you know, for me, because no one was training me. And then you have becoming a run, understanding a run. And then there's just combinations. You know, some people are right. like, oh, I need to begin. I need the beginner package and I need platforms and then I'm done. Right. So, you Sean, know? I believe you are using a contractor based uh, platform that feeds you business and you're doing independent work, but not on the same platform. T- tell us all about the platforms you use and why. OK, so with with the whole uh, we'll start with. Um, well, there's, you know, two profiles. There's no set sequence. Mm-hmm. If you're an experienced signing uh, mobile signing agent, then you just want to get on a platform and convert. If you're inexperienced or maybe just not enough confidence, you you like I just need somebody to show me what I'm doing. I don't have any customers. I need any, so so you go to like the contractor base. So I started with Notarize. Just luck of the draw. I'm in Virginia. Just worked out for me, right? Um, I, I I bust my tail because they started at five dollars and they have four queues they have one general notary one business and then two real estate one's a buyer package and the, and the seller package you don't get those out the bat you would think if i'm a seasoned veteran in the mobile game and i got my run credentials when i sign up they're going to throw you right in there with some training and then throw you in it that's not how it works unfortunately I, I don't think it's fair but i understand to a certain point but so what happens is you have to go straight into the general notary queue so i'm doing these five dollar transactions one at a time, right? They're adding up, but it's just, again, I'm just doing general notary work and I'm a signing agent, you know, at this point. Then they move you over to a business queue, which is their busiest queue, but it's also the, the biggest pain in their butt, you know, you know what? So it's because- Your honesty is refreshing. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, um, they have they have a specific postal form that is worldwide in demand, you know, getting virtual addresses so i get it but they're not they're not the for the hassle i don't they need to compensate like it should be a five dollar queue a ten dollar queue and then you get your 25 dollar queues for real estate and it's just so i paid my dues you know bit my lip paid my dues went through there got promoted because when i started you you got one box just a general then you get 50 calls get promoted to the next box and then you know um I think it was like 150, but even they said 150, but that wasn't the real case. It was more than that because they were trying to iron things out. So I was, I, I got in about after 200 months. But, and after that, you go into the real estate and um, the rest is history on that. But I will say I'm hearing a lot of improvements now that they, they've they uh, shortened some of the time frames and the, and the car requirements. They still don't, they don't mess around with real estate because it's, you know, it's a higher uh, liability benchmark. So they're real selective about real estate, but you can't do it. And again, I, I just bared down and, and was just knocking them out, you know, from that from that standpoint of a contractor queue. Now, so once you're oh, sorry, no. <laughs> once you're at the gold level yeah. and you're getting the real estate 
is life good? Like, is everything perfect? Life is a lot better. That's when I started. Um, I was making, you know, thousand, two thousand dollars a week doing those kind of transactions. If you think about it, if they're giving you twenty five, right? And I understand the business model, even at the five dollar rate. Um, you don't appreciate that until you start doing independent work. So what happens is you log in, your doc, your customers are already um, verified, your documents are already um, prepared for you. So you're literally pointing and clicking, right? The most I've ever seen, in a, even in a buyer package, is maybe 60, 70 pages, right? So it might take me, in the beginning, it took me an hour to do a buyer package. Now it takes me about 45, 30 to 45 minutes. The seller packages, all day long, 15, 20 minutes. Sometimes you might get one deed, sign it in five minutes and get paid $25. So it works out. It evens out. Um, I think maybe the, the, uh, the point I'm trying to make as far as on the independent side is I have to do all the prep, right? And yes, my signing is maybe 25 minutes, excuse me, not even that long, maybe 10, 15 minutes just for signings, but the prep work goes in, which, which is a whole nother conversation that you have to have with your title and escrow companies. Cause when, it, when the Ron first came on, they were like, Oh, you guys don't have to drive anymore. We'll, we'll pay you peanuts. And we are like, no, 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 no. Um, Somebody has to tag prep, these docs. Right. Just like we had to prep all those stacks of papers. I got to tag everything inside the, you know, your PDF. So I was like, no, this is my rate. This is what I'm doing. If you don't like it, let's see how far you get and find somebody else. So, you know, I lost a few. It's so true. It's so you true because nobody in that office wants to sit there for 47 minutes placing little tags of where the signatures are going to happen. And then so I, the session yeah. failed somehow. And now they got to do it again. For the new session exactly oh, exactly so I, I let i let that happen a couple of times and you know they'll, they'll come back and and agree to my terms and the prices and then from there on then you know the respect plan and i tried to tell them the the price range hasn't um the fees haven't changed they just transfer from paper to digital because the f the level of effort we we prepare and, and do these you know i got to troubleshoot audio and video that's one of the other downfalls I, I had an issue with with the notarizing. You know, I've had conversations with them. Like, I'm saying, okay, look, I'm coming in this five dollar queue, and their audio, the videos messed up. I got to troubleshoot it. This is 20 minutes in. I haven't even started the notarization yet, right? So I'm like, okay, now we're talking about 30, 45 minutes. I got five dollars for this thing, right? <laughs> so I'm like, you guys need to either have a separate department where they queue up everything, make sure the audio and videos is prepared, you know, text support, and then send it to me because all I'm doing is getting paid for notarization or start sending me a salary for notarization, for te- uh, troubleshooting and notarization because I'm doing all this, this free tech support, getting them right. And I just happen to be an IT, so it wasn't as bad, but I can imagine somebody who's not acclimated to that kind of stuff. It can be frustrating. Yeah, Even with me being an expert, my first call on notarize was horrible. Was, I was on there for an hour, my first call total hour oh my gosh i i know you're right because i've lived it a thousand times too i mean you're asking them however you can maybe on a post-it note or something with the video if they've got video working you I mean, there. Yeah. you're asking are you in google chrome are yeah. you in Mozilla firefox are yeah. you on safari are you on something no one's ever heard of <laughs> let's try to get you onto the right browser what's a browser Whew, we gotta really dial it back because yeah you you just don't know the level of tech savviness that someone has. Right. And then you bring in the thousands of kinds of models of phones. Oh, the, that, that whole are. turn on your browser security settings thing, you know, they don't know how to do that. And mm-hmm. rightfully so, like this stuff should be either pre prep or again, pay me for my time to do it, you know. And again, I, I don't make it sound like I'm totally, you know, down in, no, 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 no. it's with any platform this way yeah. it's yeah we don't even have to just attribute it there because yeah. every platform whether they have a tech support number or not it's not 24 7 someone is there someone's exactly. not you know exactly. 
it's just really tough. So, but when you start to factor in that full-time tech support available by phone, it starts to make platforms uh, untenable. Like nobody can pay, what would IT support be? 50 to $70 an hour really for? Exactly, exactly. So when you're doing that, but the notarization income is $25 and maybe the platform is doing two, three, four per tech per hour, it doesn't, it doesn't make the dollars and cents work. So no. that's why so many platforms have pretty darn weak tech support. That's and, like, and I think they us. kind of, they kind of know they're taking advantage of it until someone levels the playing field, you know, as competition, they, they kind of know because yeah, oh, yeah. they have, they're, they're quick You're to right. give you a, um, a knowledge based article and say, Oh, this is how you, I'm like, no, no. <laughs> Funny thing is no one cared about laptop camera quality until pandemic. Right. So, and they're terrible. Actually, this, I've got one right here. So I love my old workhorse Toshiba, but the, mm-hmm. the built-in camera was oh. so grainy and so bad that I actually permanently have attached the USB camera just exactly. to get decent quality for the videos so that you can actually see people's faces. So yes, that is just all over the place. And then I have this backup laptop and then this desktop <laughs> and all have external cameras on them. And it's just, it's a mess. It's always fallen over and everything, but you're right yeah. about that for sure too. I know yeah, with your so, IT so, background, you're in the right spot. Yeah. And I, and I try to, you know, contribute because even, even with, um, when I was with Notarize, I, I would, have those conversations when they have the, the meetings and stuff and say, Hey, look, um, stop defaulting the, uh, authentication for your ID for the camera on the, on the laptop. You know, the first one should be the phone because we've always had high quality phones. Right. Right. Cause I got tired of always, all right, I got to do a retake, you know, <laughs> let's do this again. So they finally started improving stuff like that where, um, the default became the camera. Now they got the cool stuff with the QR codes. Yes. You know, you see Yes, because so many folks have the iPhone and that's just defaulted to QR code. Right. It's going to read it and follow it. And thank goodness. Right. Yeah, Sean is talking about for when they take the photos of their IDs. So yeah. uh, now most of the platforms are putting a QR code up, whereas it used to be it would send you a text to your phone, which could take five, seven minutes or never yeah. reach you if you're international and trying to use like a Google voice number or something. Yeah, that was uh, the trick for that is email, you know. hmm. You yeah. have to send it to their email, open it up on their phone. And still, that's sometimes that's a challenge. They, they were like, what? The concept, like, just open up the email on your phone. Yeah. yeah. So I just made this and I'm about to laminate it. I have this little laminator that I haven't used oh, wow. in a few years. But I, I am so tired of like, oh, I got to find a, oh, here's an envelope. Yeah, you're here's right. the back you're right. of something to write on. So Sticky I was like, no, no, no. I know. Yeah, I already know the questions. Let me right. just put all the questions <laughs> or all the instructions on. Let me make it front and back. This is what mm-hmm. I did. And I am going to laminate this. And then I'm just going to be like, <laughs> this one. That's smart. That's smart. Okay, this one, because they're so repetitive. And I'm like, why haven't I done this a year and a half ago? I, right. I kept like living in denial, hoping it would go away, the tech issue. Me too. But they're here to yeah. stay, guys. So we might as well just roll with the punches <laughs> and save ourselves some time. And that, that's just going to reduce my stress level. That's all Big that's for. Yeah. For my sure. sanity. That's why I have a gym. You see a lot of my interviews, there's a gym behind me because I'm working out in between calls, just trying to stay sane. <laughs> get the heart rate down from the right. online notarization session at the gym i love exactly. it all right sean i know you have your website going so let's have a look at it and you can sort of walk us through all right sean i wanted to share your website here could you sure. sort of walk us through and so first thing i'll i'll give you is like the logic and business model um when you're first starting out you know first thing people ask me is oh you know do i need a professional website do i need to have you know a, a a business license and all that. I didn't do all that. I've, I have experience with all that. I kept it simple as a run. I was trying to keep my expenses down because I didn't even know if I was going to commit to this after one year. I said, this might not even last, you know? So I went out, got my um, Google business page. And then I started, I said, okay, I'm new, but how do I make my clients feel comfortable? So that's why you see all my qualifications on there, um, my different certifications of everything. So when somebody comes to my, my landing page, you're like, okay, this guy knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. He has experience. And then 
what I'll do is I'll post, uh, obviously you get the testimonials, which I like your testimonials you know, a lot. I read through them before we came on camera. Yeah. They're, they're the, my biggest seller. And then I post, um, you know, different articles of, you know, trying to educate the public about what Ron is when they visit my site. And, and I meant to um, say that as well. My, the, um, oh, I had a brain for it. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, Google business page. Oh yeah. You're I got Google so many questions and, and, and demand about it that um, it's a separate service too, where I train you how to set up your Google business space. But again, I have a, a domain name that I pay for through Google and I mm -hmm. use Google business page because it was, it was cheaper and faster. You know, I was up in like a day. You know? Yeah. All right. I love it. Yeah. All right, and, you know, you can book on there. I, I keep my, you know, the phone number and, and customers get a quote. Mm -hmm. For the most part, I get more phone calls than mm -hmm. I do online inquiries, like filling out, you know, my intake form or anything. Mm -hmm. more, more people will text me or call me more than anything else. Okay. So we spoke about your contract experience with Notarize. What yeah. about your independent work? What, uh, what platforms are you using to do your independent work? What's it cover? Okay. So I'll start off with the where Notarize left off and then bleed it into, uh, contrast it into the whole independent. Because it, at the end of the day, um, you want to have in a perfect world as Ron's, right? Signing agents. I want one platform to do everything on it. That would be so beautiful, right? Yep. Depending on what state you're in, depending on what platform you're using, that's not the case. Um, what I found out was that uh, Notarize has the, what we'll call like the call center queue, right? Mm -hmm. And then they have an independent side as well. And they even have a third one. But I found the hard way that you can't use them both as a dual profile. You have to pick a side and say, I'm either going to be 100% contractor, 100% independent. That kills me for my simplicity and, and my money earning potential with, with one um, platform. Because let's face right. it, Notarize is like the Amazon Iran right now. You know, they're, they, they, they're all over the place. In my personal opinion, they, they do have the best platform. Mm -hmm. um, for the simplicity of the hotkeys and the prep and everything. But that piece of it is what um, causes wreaks havoc in my life because now I have to go out and search for an independent platform, i.e. I use one notary because mm -hmm. it's very simplistic. They don't, they don't, there's no bells and whistles. They're like, here's your signature, here's your stamp, <laughs> here's your signing. I love it. You know, mm -hmm. and I said, OK, I'm going with them for my independent. I've used some of the other ones. Um, again, the, the dinosaurs I never mess with because the sign up fees are ridiculous. You know, um, sign X and some of the other um, DocuSign, DocVerify, stuff like that. They were just you got to be you know, you got to have a lot of startup costs for that. And then their technology was just kind of behind because it's more like passing documents back and forth. Mm -hmm. That's I like right. the real time aspect of it so, right because on one notary you and the signer could simultaneously be signing right. applying text on the document it's real time I, I like that about it too right so I, I went with them even there's another one I think it's I get the, there's always a name war with all these wrong platforms I um, think e-notary log is similar yeah right but you got e-notary one notary online notary and then there's signature signers or signers secure signing secure sign see there's so many different ones but I, I did a demo with them as well their platform is amazing it's robust but it was too much for me to mm. deal with as a <laughs> note like I just wanted something you know to execute the job I don't I, I if I depending on who you are and your personality fit that thing is like probably even better than notarized in my opinion, but mm -hmm. I needed something simple, quick and fast. That I need to get off the ground running. So that's why I chose one, one notary and it's worked beautiful. So I do a simultaneous Ron lifestyle of contractor and um, independent, but I have to do my independent side on one notary because notarized doesn't have it. And even one notary, um, they, they had a, I know that in the beginning they had that whole 50, sign up thing but it didn't make sense because if i got 50 clients what do i need you for because i'm already you know <laughs> level i didn't i never understood that so i never signed up for it. you're right then they had this thing about uh um paying per hour versus per transaction but again 
you had to pick a side. You either had to be on that side of it or or the independent side. Again, you're killing my money. So I stuck with the independent side. That's what I use um, for my independent clients, whether it's law firm signing service, it works well, you know, overseas. I, I've even had one of my colleagues in, in another state, his platform, I'm not going to name the name, but it's one of the popular ones, couldn't get past the Chinese wall or something, right? Oh, oh well, actually, I yeah, a lot of people in China cannot use online authorization platforms full stop. So they have to yeah. use a VPN to get around. Exactly. And but even with it, the yeah. VPN, he still couldn't get it to work. He, oh I get all gosh. his overflow. And oh, wow. it works for me with one notary. But oh. one notary is not legal in his state, so he can't use it. Oh. Yeah. Well, it, it, uh, you know, I think from everything you've mentioned about working on the apostille work with your notary friend in New York, and your online notarization overflow with your notary friend in Nevada. I mean, it just shows you how online notarization connects you all over the United States with other notaries. And then with your customers, absolutely worldwide. I, I mean, what are some interesting places where you've had clients uh, executing documents with you? I've had one doing 60 miles an hour in his car. And I didn't even know that was illegal. <laughs> At first, they'd be like, you can't do that. I was like, oh, my bad. Remote is remote to me, so he's on the side, steering wheel, you know, doing, I was like, okay, you got to pull over. I figured that out the hard way. Um, I've had one a lady come out of her shower, and, you know, I'm like. I you thought you were going to be like, camera? I had somebody in Kosovo. You're like, a lady came out of her shower. No, no, like, yeah, she's coming out of her shower, dripping wet, and she's like, oh, oh, okay, you're ready. I'm like, okay, you realize we're on camera. She just went, went with the flow, started signing. I, I was like, okay. This is the power of remote notarization. Um, yeah, I've had them in, in Russia. Uh, when I had that one, that was a funny one because um, uh, another uh, Seattle uh, sent me a, um, a, a recommend, uh, what do you call it, a referral. She's like, hey, oh, yeah. I got this this notal, uh, this uh, signing. I can't do it. Can you do it for me? And I was like, where is it? She said, it's in Georgia. I'm like, oh, okay, Atlanta or or Russia? I was just joking, LOL. She's like, Russia. I was like, oh, crap. Okay. So I took it on. Um, but the, the, the hop is crazy because I got the referral from her in, in Seattle. Mm -hmm. the, the mobile agent who couldn't do the job is in D.C., but the actual client is in, in Russia. So this hop is bananas, but by the time it gets to me, <laughs> of course, I, I, um, you know, we, we knocked it out the park, got it done. Um, and even that was a witness situation. And I had to wow. use um, um, a lot of people don't understand that, you know, there's three options when you do a, a remote notarization for signatures. You have mm -hmm. electronic, you have um, handwritten, freehand electronic, meaning stylus or, or your mm -hmm. mouse. Mm -hmm. And then you can upload, write a piece of paper, take a picture of it, upload it as a signature. So I had to do right. that one with the one in Russia. So that that was very that was a unique situation. And I have some clients where I have to um, the title company, I have to sell them on that and say, here's here's a list of your options. And because there's they're just not forward thinking, mm -hmm. they'll go with the OK, write it on a piece of paper because that's what they're used to right, and upload right. it. But as long as they they're comfortable with that and they take it. That's their standard. Like, I can't even do an electronic signature with it because they're just not comfortable with it. But mm -hmm. if, you know, with the, writing the paper and uploading, they're fine. They're totally fine. So I, I have that as, you know, some of my standards of uh, one of my clients. And right. stuff. So you're obviously marketing it, and you mentioned that you'll call on Friday afternoons when people are tired and done with it and you just want mm -hmm. them to give you your files. So give you their files because they don't want to mess with that anymore. <laughs> so uh, that's a good marketing uh, uh, strategy, definitely, to reach out directly to title companies afternoon on Friday. What are some other marketing tips that you that you'd be comfortable sharing with us? Okay, I'm glad you said that because that helped figure what I forgot. So this is where I was going with that. So think about the states that don't have any notarization at all: Cal uh, California, South Carolina, and New York. Right? Mm -hmm. New York was hilarious because they were what they call a rent state. Does your audience know what that is, or should I explain it? Uh, please do explain what remote ink notarization is. Okay, this is a great yeah. time to do it. Um. Bryn, remote ink notarization. Basically, this is when um, this is the hybrid stage between 
mobile notary and full-blown run. Some states weren't ready. They have emergency orders enacted. You're basically on Zoom like we are. They hold up a piece of paper, they sign it, and then they send it to you via text, email, snail mail. Some states have a, a, a time frame, a window, you know, X amount of days has to get back to the notary. Others, they don't care. Mm. So Cuomo didn't renew the uh, Ren contract. And um, so they went from sort of being online to not being online at all. Now, this is a huge gap, right? Yeah. We already know the story about California, right? They, they're not online. And then if they're getting online, they're going to limit themselves. So I had to think outside the box and say, how do I take advantage of this? So mm -hmm. think of affiliate marketing in reverse, right? Yeah. I started calling all um, the notaries that I knew or even random ones and explaining in partnerships. Hey, look, I know you guys don't have a legal Ron situation in your state. Here's mm -hmm. what we can do to partner up. And mm -hmm. I say, advertise on your website that you do run. They're like, I don't do run. I know. Yes, you do. You do run. And then they're like, okay, I don't get it. So then they'll get a call. I'm like, hey, I got to run. I can't do it. I told you. What do I do now? Send them to me. Mm -hmm. what, is your, what is your stamp fee in, in California? I don't know, five, 10 bucks. Congratulations. You just got some passive income for five bucks. I got the business. They're making passive income while they're mm -hmm. running around. So you got a huge gap in states like, North, uh, South Carolina and um, New York and California, where I have affiliates yep. where anytime they get business that that's a Ron, mm -hmm. it's on their website. They'll, they'll pass them to me. They can book them straight to my calendar. Mm -hmm. And then when I make the profit, I, I parse off, you know, what I owe them and everybody wins. The customer gets, you know, the remote notarization. I get the business. They get passive income while they're still doing mobiles and trying to, you know, wait for them to, to get their act together and uh, legislate the thing. So, yeah, that's, that's a, a great idea. Yeah. Really, really good idea. I wonder, if, um, I'm sure you've reached out to whoever had the most trafficked mobile notary websites and said, hey, let's put a button on your website that links to my calendar <laughs> for your Ron orders that you can't complete because your state doesn't have online notarization yet. So yeah, this is a good way to, to find those customers, bring those notaries in to make some income at least because it is their right. advertising that's supporting it and, right. and then getting them into your capable hands so you can take care of them. Mm -hmm. So it sounds like win, win, win all the way around. And uh you and I talked a little bit before we came on the recorded video about California. Right. Um, I don't want to spend too much time on it, but I it. it's, uh, it, it is, it's kind of concerning and frustrating to me. You know, California is allowing electronically notarized uh, parcel property records to be recorded, meaning that online notaries from outside the state of California can notarize those deeds and then the county recorders are recording them in the counties the only entities cut out of this equation the are the locals. notaries yep. so uh, i it is frustrating for me as a notary to see another notary prevented from doing the business right i like even competition playing fields. I guess that's the cop the capitalists in me. But right. we, and I know Sean, we talked about a little bit. You and I are both earning from California title companies. They exactly. send us work. Exactly. Because they have to get that deed notarized somehow. And if they're going to tell their customers and clients, I need you to fly back tomorrow from China so that you can notarize this deed for this vacant land you're selling for $35,000 in the middle of the desert right. with no hookups. <laughs> uh, you know, good luck getting your $2,500 flight. Hope you don't catch anything. And, and I'm sure that your wife will love to be left alone uh, watching little kids and you're gonna be in trouble when you get back. <laughs> exactly. You know, it's, it's a huge, it's not just the money. It's a hassle. Right. It's a huge, huge hassle, but I don't like seeing a cert any states. You know, California is not the only one. So, nope. but it is the biggest. It is the mm -hmm. biggest state with an impact on the most people. That there is no online notarization there, but 
it's almost, I think it bothers me so much because it's almost hypocritical. How are you going to legally record electronically notarized documents in every county in California, but not have a law that allows your own state's notaries to do the online notarization? So you said something that stuck out to me, though. Is it is it legal in all counties in California? Or is it I don't really know. And I'm not oh, okay. a lawyer. I can't give legal advice. But well, I'll I just tell you from my, from my experience, there's there's certain counties that mm -hmm. um, that only can do the electronic ones. It's now it's a lot of them. Now it's not just like a small you know uh, number or anything, but there is a lot. But like you said, they're not the only state. And I will say this to your audience to help argue for an argument to sell. Um, anytime there's a debate going on, especially with a title company. Um, and they're like, we don't do them because mm -hmm. obviously they, they might not be prepared or, or even know or understand. All you got to do is um, reach out to the county clerk's office in that state and s ask them, send them an email, call them, say, hey, do you accept electronic? They say, yes, mm -hmm. there's your proof. And then you can supply whoever you're having that debate with mm -hmm. that email address and phone number and say, look, actually, you guys can, you know, you can allow this. Here's, mm -hmm. here's the number. Here's the email address have a conversation, give me a call back when you're ready yeah. or, or just keep moving again when you're wrong. Cause I think, I think Chicago has a weird setup too with their, um, uh, Ron situation. And I keep mm -hmm. telling them, but if you guys are Ron's go beyond, you know? Right. And, and then some, some States like North Carolina, Georgia, they don't allow same. They're in the same situation in California is where if you don't live in that state, you, um, you're a signer. Mm -hmm. You can't notarize them remotely, which is right. bananas to me, but okay. I remember that about a year and a half ago, uh, I did a few for people in New York and uh, I was really confused about what was up because I, I saw that notaries in New York could do online notarizations, but then it was only for signers in the state of New York. And I was like, yes. how are you going to prove that's, that? Like, let me put how, a background with like Empire State Building back here. And hey, I'm in New York, you know, <laughs> well, again, in, OK, I'll tell you from, from an from an I, right from an IP uh, IT perspective. I'm thinking they, they're maybe they're, they're tracking the uh, IP address. Now, again, you know, there are people walk a, a, a fine, thin line of legalities. And, you know, right. I'm, I want to get I'm not I'm not condoning any of that, but it does happen. And that's the whole point when you're in the middle of the the rent in the Ron stage because like you said they were they were um reduced to whatever county they lived in. It wasn't even the state, I think it was a, a specific county in New York. <laughs> I mean, yes. if I go half a mile that way, I'm on a county right. border. Exactly. I mean, you could even have the same land across two yeah, anyway, okay. But I guess yeah. we don't have to split hairs about it. But it yeah, is right. a strange Wild West world and I'll be kind of yeah. glad when everything settles down. I, I was reading that national legislation that senator warner and i forgot the name of senator from north dakota but that they're they have proposed national online notarization legislation so it would just kind of say it's like in a federal everywhere commission? well we wouldn't need a federal commission but it would say online notarization is a go everywhere so but it would still be all by the states states handle oh, their own okay order. so i was think, thinking of something else yeah yeah they need to just have that every state can do it but i will tell you we're, we're in the infancy of this whole thing anyway, mm -hmm. but we need to get to the point where we have a federal commission, in my opinion. You know, I hate being restricted to where if I leave the state of Virginia, I can't work as far as Virginia. Now, you can have dual commission right, right. and then sign up right. for their run um, program and their commission as well. That way, if, you, if you're in one state, you know, like Florida, mm -hmm. you, can, you can do run there. And if I come back to Virginia... I can do Ron here, but I'm talking about where it's just all the way across the board. It's actually already in play, but it's not at our level. If you're active military duty mm -hmm. and you're a notary of public, you can actually notarize anywhere in the world. You know, of course, not all of us aren't going to just run off and join the military so we become notaries. But well, I don't know. Now I have an idea. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the fact that it's our the precedence is already there. So I see a federal commission coming. Yeah. You know? It's, you're reminding me when my, my mother lived in Germany because she worked for the Army Corps of Engineers. Mm -hmm. And the, when she was selling a property in Austin, she went to the general counsel and 
th- she was able to um, sign and seal and everything there in Germany. And then my mom yeah, could that, sell property. Is that the same as the, the embassy? It was different uh, because mm. it was for the army, but. Oh, OK. The, I get it. Yeah. Property. But no yes, property. Yeah. Real similar because she could have. Well, she was in Frankfurt. So mm. um, I don't know where the consulate is around there, but she would have had to go to the embassy in Berlin, I believe. So, mm. no, we're talking about like an eight hour train. Exactly. <laughs> this is too much. Yeah, My, my right. brother's in the army and he's he's actually a, a no republic. So. Oh, good. For those, you know, enlisted who are even, you know, trying to get some extra work or whatever, or, you know, they might be the, the spouse and let them know, say, hey, yes, you know, you qualify for this. This is good side money. Yes. Yeah. Military spouses. And I thought about that. I was thinking, man, it's too bad. You have to be in your state's borders to do online notarizations because there are so many military spouses over. And that way you could cover every time zone because it's really tough to have a 24 hour platform with online notarization because, you know, the time zones go from East Coast to Hawaii. And Hawaii has online notarization, but no rules, no legislation in place. So there's no active online notaries in Hawaii yet, even though they have allowed online notarization. So that limits it to down. I've, to I've closed, I've closed Alaska. loans in Hawaii. I've closed real estate transactions in Hawaii. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Online as a run. But so I'm curious to know what what is your, I guess, uh, time zone sleep pattern being around for me? It's so random, like because I'm dealing with so many different countries. Well, I have an eight month old, so okay. I sleep okay. when I can and I <laughs> do not try to schedule anything. Now, one time a title company gave me something and I said, OK, I'm going to I'm going to reach out to them when I'm ready. And the baby woke up at like three. And then I the folks were in England and I called them at 4 a.m. my time. And this mm-hmm. I was laughing so much. The next day, uh, the title lady called me and she said they were just singing your praises. We couldn't believe she called us at 4 a.m. her time. <laughs> Such a great work ethic. And I was like, <laughs> Yeah, that was it. Right, it was, right. It was no a crying baby who needed milk. <laughs> <laughs> and then on the tail end, I was like, well, let me try to knock this one out. So you do what you can when you can, right? Yeah. All right. So I think, all right, we've covered most of the questions. So for final words of wisdom, what do you want to share with online notaries out there who are really making a go of it and, and want to be successful? What advice do you have for them? I think I, let's see if I can do this and sound intelligent, um, articulate. You do. First thing I will say, uh, don't be scared and understand before you think about becoming a Ron, before you think about becoming a sign agent, master your craft at being a notary. Learn your handbook. I, I run into so many that. They, they haven't even cracked it open. I'm like, you've got to know this stuff because you're liable for it. Mm-hmm. When you master that, that's when becoming a signing agent, becoming a run goes downhill. It, the effort is just so seamless at that point. Um, from a total run perspective, I would say get a laptop that's new or, you know, make sure you're running. Plug in. Even though I got the, the greatest Wi-Fi connection, yes. I still plug in. Hard wire landline, yeah. yes. Right, I got Ethernet cable, even, plug it. Right, Ethernet, plug it in. I hear excuses. Oh, it's in the living room, the garage. Go, Amazon has fifty. Staple foot, gun it on the wall. A yeah. <laughs> hundred foot cables, they're, they're dirt cheap. Plug in because it, it's critical when you're dealing with a transaction with your client. It doesn't look professional when you have internet. If they can have them all day long, that's on there. But you can't have. Them. Um, and you're um. I've had I've had uh, law firms and escrow companies want to um, what do they call it shadow my calls because they were so curious. I just want to see how how do I conduct myself? You know, what's my professional ethics? So I had to have them on as a a phantom witness, even though they weren't signing anything. They just wanted to see what was going on. So you got to make sure, you know, you you, you have all your, 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 you know, your your background. Like um, for me, I'm at a different level now, I, I will say. I don't really care. Like it could be a zoo or a jungle behind me and I'm still going to notarize it at this point. You know, I've, I've had enough experience, but in the beginning, you know, get a Chinese wall or, 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 you know, use the, what do you call it? The, what do you call that? Stuff, oh, the background? backgrounds or the, Right. I yeah. don't really like them because they, you know, your head is it's going in and out. And, right. Yeah. But you know, stuff like that, make sure it's, it's quiet. Um, 
you know, have a, have a nice space. I'm trying to think of some more pertinent information for like, you know, real. Don't spend too much. Take a page out of Sean. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 And, and really watch your expenses. Throwing $500 at something is not going to guarantee $5,000 back. Right. Uh, Right. Right. I'll, I'll say one thing is, um, everybody has this things notarized like the Holy grail. And I understand, especially when you're new. Mm -hmm. And what I'm telling you is find out whether your state has what they call it an approved vendor list, or they're saying, here's a starter list, but you can, you can work anywhere. Mm -hmm. And one little secret is if you, if your approved vendor list isn't working, or excuse me, if you're on a starter list and it's not working for you, um, go to every other state and see what their approved vendors list is. There's so many companies out there. I can't even keep up with half of them anymore, but you'd be surprised what, you know, little title Ron pl- platform is just like maybe starting out or they're, they're establishing up big enough in that one state. They're taking, you know, new agents all over. They just don't, you know, they don't have time for marketing as well, but I'll, I'll find a new one and be like, Oh, I've never heard of them. Reach out to them, send them an email or, or apply in their intake form. And then boom, I now I'm on their, right. Right. Exactly. I'm on their platform. Go to each state and do that. If you feel like your state isn't working out for you. That's you great know. advice because there are some states with really long approved vendors list. Yes. Because when you're just Googling online notarization platform, you're going to get like the same three to five again and again and again. And again. It's, it's a hard thing yeah. to Google. Some pay right. way it, more right. for the That's why I say don't, better. yeah, Google is not going to be beneficial because, you know, who's ever had the marketing mm-hmm. budget to uh, get the top of the list. But yeah, I just go to each state and be nosy. I'm in there looking. Oh, okay. Oh. Yeah. When I very first started being an online notary, you know, there's no course in Texas or anything, but I knew that Florida had an online notarization course Mm -hmm. that the notaries have to take to then Mm -hmm. get their Ron letter and get approved. And I thought, well, why don't I just take Florida's? So I spent my $30 and I did the Florida online notarization course and left a little bit enlightened. I'm not going to say it like solved all my issues or anything, right. but it gave me some background. Okay. Well, this is what they're putting out there to educate their notaries. Now, at least I, I got something from them, but uh, it's kind of funny that I went and voluntarily took another state's right. <laughs> you invested in stuff. yourself. You invested yeah. In just, yeah. I, did, I did the same thing. I just did it through the NNA. They had a, they had a Ron course. I yep. took it. I said, oh, okay. They, they have Ron documentation as well. Um, again, it doesn't, it's not the end all be all. But is it, it's a good um, building block. Like your foundation can come off of that, and then go into there mm-hmm. from you know from there. At the end of the day, nothing's gonna um, beat a uh, real world experience. Putting your feet to the fire, jumping in, taking one. I tell I tell my my students um, after they take my course, mm-hmm. the first thing you should do is grab a friend or family member and bug the hell out of them and say, Hey, get online with me. Pretend like you're my signer. Yeah. Until you're comfortable. Once they do that, then you can take on any client you want. That's right. If you can just do some run throughs and just get a feel for it and know it's common pitfalls. I remember I had an online notary on um, and and she said it it just won't work. All it does is show their ID. It won't move on to the document. We can't we can't sign anything. I said, did you confirm the ID? What? That there's a blue confirm ID. Like you look at the person and you look at the. She's like, uh, I'll be right back. <laughs> she went back to yeah, go to see, the, I watched. Fine. I watched every single video of because uh, they uh, one note they had a channel, you know, and I watched yeah. every single video before I even started. Um, I w- it was a nightmare, but it was fun because I had to pretend I didn't know who to ask. I had to be the signer and the client, so I had my phone in one room to avoid the echo, my laptop in another one. Sent the invite, grab my phone. Okay, pretend I'm signing up. They ran back to the room, notarized the document, and then ran back to the other room, you know, finalized it. Then boom, you know, after, after it's done, you get an email with the document. I'm like, oh, that's it. That's how it goes. And then I was good after that, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. So you just need one run through to see. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't wait for. Um, one, don't wait for a real transaction. I, I get calls like that too a lot. Where they're like, "Yo, I have a signing tomorrow. And it's a run. I don't know what to do." I'm like, oh man, <laughs> this, and, is, this is bad. Right, and don't wait till you get a run order to choose a platform because you can't onboard that fast. It's no. going to take two weeks to onboard pretty much with anybody completely. Right. So right. you need to do it in advance. It's not something to wait for. Right. Right. 
Well, Sean, thank you so much. I really, really uh, loved hearing from you. Your take on everything, uh, your honesty is refreshing and you obviously are serving lots of folks all over the place and you're really helping Notary with the interviews you've, you've done for others. And I just love that you came on here to do this one with me. I'm, I'm happy to help. I, I hope, you know, I stumbled through them. I, I get nervous, but hopefully you guys learn something from it. Um, like again, I, I've been a fan of yours for a while as well. I've been watching um, all your interviews and from, I remember from, you know, early on. So yeah, I'm, it's, it's like, Oh, I've arrived. I'm, I'm, I'm on your show now. So, <laughs> I'm on Catherine's show. So. Oh my gosh. You arrived a long time ago. I remember yeah. more than a year ago, you were telling me what, everything you were doing and you were up to. And um, I, I believe in like another interview you were sharing about how you were making about 2000 a week and everything. Yeah, I, yeah. That's great. It's a really sustainable, uh, decent income working mm -hmm. from home and on your own terms. And you can go on vacation yeah. when you want and, and everything. And you get to yeah, keep doing the business. I, I really wanted to share it because we had talked about that offline. You said that was one of the, the, the big hook in factors. And I was like, yeah, I wanted to keep it real because I couldn't find any real data on that myself. So when I started making those numbers, um, I, uh, I said, yeah, I'm going to post it because people need to know if I'm going to take this chance, especially if you're either if you're a side hustle, it's OK. But if you're trying to make it full time, you need to know, is this sustainable? I said, I'm putting it out there because um, when I was on that particular channel, even before we got to the, the video interview part, I was sending her screens like, yo, look at this. And she's like, okay, you got to come on and show this. Cause you know, no one else is doing this. And I was like, yeah. Oh, I didn't, I didn't realize it. So yeah, that's, that's my honesty. Um, heck I, I, I even got one of my students now. I got a, um, uh, a picture I took with my phone of like my independent checks. Like, like this is yeah. real dude, you know, do it. Yeah. Yeah. And that's something that, I think a lot of folks don't realize either it's, it's not all Venmo and PayPal and online payments. You'll still get multiple still. checks in the mail daily. Just like when you do mobile notary work, like today I get that USPS informed delivery. It tells me what's coming. And I, I was looking too. today. I was like, Oh, there's three coming today. I mean, exactly. one of them is $31. So. <laughs> right. Exactly. I, but, just, I had that same notification. And again, there, when I, one thing I will say though, um, I, you get paid a lot faster as a Ron, even in the mail with a check. Oh, yeah. I get paid way more faster than with as a, as a mobile notary. When it goes Regardless. through two layers and right. then there's 30 day and then there's, yeah. oh, we do 45. No. Mm. I, yeah. I haven't experienced that. I think the longest I've ever had was two weeks and that's because it was coming from California or something, you know? Yeah. I get paid really quick as a Ron, whether it's digital or a paper check. They don't, they don't waste any time. One, one of them was so happy. They paid me the next day. You know, I was unheard of. Yeah, I, yeah. Oh my gosh. Don't you love that? Yeah. Like, you got to pay yeah. to play, right? Right. right? Well, thank you so much, Sean. This has been really enjoyable for me. I love that we get to share everything that we're seeing out there in the world of Ron together. And, uh, you know, for state to state to state, it's just not that different. And we get to bounce ideas off of each other. This is going to be a really great remote online notary network of interview video. I have a feeling this one's going to get a lot of views. I so, appreciate it. I appreciate it. One, one more thing I'll, I'll tell you sure. to entice them as a run. Mm -hmm. You see how we're nice and professional. I'm in my bed talking to you. I work like this. It looks like it's a, you know, an office. It does. I'm in the bed. This is how <laughs> I work sometimes. I'm totally in the bed right now. <laughs> see, gosh, I keep I'm... it raw. I keep it real. Yeah. In the bed. <laughs> You're awesome. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining us here today. Sean Cofield, Virginia Online Notary. I'm Catherine Cabrera, an online notary in Texas. We can't wait to see you online. Bye. Right. Bye.